What is up? My name is Austin Marks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm currently a respiratory therapist. On my YouTube channel I talk about respiratory therapy, I talk about respiratory therapy school, and I talk about what it's like being a respiratory therapist. So if you want to see any of that, make sure you like and subscribe. So I am also the admin of a Facebook group called the RT Club. And in that Facebook group it's full of respiratory therapists, respiratory therapy students, and anyone looking to aspire to respiratory therapy. So if you want to be a part of that community, ask some questions, get to know a little bit more, head over to Facebook. Once again, it's the RT Club and make sure you join. So a question that I get quite frequently is, what's the difference between a CRT and an RRT? So a CRT stands for a Certified Respiratory Therapist, while an RRT stands for a Registered Respiratory Therapist. So what is the difference? A letter. That's basically it. Um, there are some more differences, however, if you're a CRT or an RRT, you can still get your license, you can still practice. However, it's much, much easier to actually practice when you get your RRT. So, I'm going to go over how you become an RRT versus how you become a CRT and then we'll talk a little bit more about the differences. So you pass respiratory school and you take your board exam. So for respiratory there are two board exams. There is uh, the TMC and then there is a CSE which is more of like a clinical simulation. So you take the TMC first. So with this test there are two scores. There's a high cut score and a low cut score. So I'm not too sure of the numbers at the moment, however I'm just going to make them up. So let's say the high cut score is 96 out of 160 or 140, whatever it may be. Um, so you pass the high cut score, you score above 96. That means that you are eligible to go on to the next test. So now you are a CRT um, and you're able to become an RRT if you pass the next exam. However, let's go back and say the low cut score is 75. So if you pass this score, you get above a 75, but you don't get above a 96, you're a CRT. So you can still go out and practice. However, you're not eligible to take the RRT exam. In order to take that exam, um, the CSE, you have to go and pass the high cut score. So you're going to have to take the TMC over again. You have to study again. Um, now, I use Kettering. I have a whole other video about how I passed my boards on the very first try. If you want to see that, make sure you head over there. I'll put a link in the description below. But if you pass the low cut score, but not the high cut score, like I said, you're a CRT, you can still practice. Um, one thing with this, though, is jobs are looking for RRTs. So when I first applied, I applied to three different places. Um, they all said, hey, you're only a CRT at the moment. That was because I just passed my TMC and they said, we want you to be an RRT. We only hire RRTs. So therefore, I told them that I was going to take the uh, CSE or the clinical simulation exam and that I was planning on becoming an RRT. So they said, okay, once you get that, contact us back again and if so, you're hired. So I took my uh, CSE, became an RRT, called them back and said, hey, I'm an RRT and I got hired. So a lot of places are looking for RRTs, however, if you're a CRT, that doesn't mean that you're never going to find a job. It doesn't mean that you're never going to work as a respiratory therapist. It just means it may be a little harder for you. So a lot of places that I've seen accept CRTs are home, co home care companies, um, smaller hospitals who are really low staff and they need people, or some traveling companies will go ahead and say, hey, you're a CRT, I'll find a place for you. Um, now, like I said, this doesn't mean that you're never going to work. However, I strongly, strongly suggest that you go back, take the TMC, try and get the high cut score, and become an RRT. So if you do not even get the low cut score, let's say you get below a 75, let's say you score a 74, that means you can't practice at all. You're not a, able to get your license, um, you're not even a CRT, you're not even an RRT, you're none of that. So therefore, you have to take the test again. And make sure you do better. Make sure you at least get the low cut score. That way you can at least apply to a job and potentially uh, start working before you get your RRT. Now another difference is that if you only have your CRT, you can't take any other exams such as the adult critical care exam. Um, you can't go ahead and take the uh, neonatal pediatrics um, exam, the sleep study exam. You can't take any of that unless you have your RRT. So there are also a lot of... Uh, older respiratory therapists who only have their CRT because there was only one test back in the day. Therefore, they're a little bit more inclined. Um, they obviously have been a respiratory therapist for a while. They've been practicing for a while. However, therefore, they don't need to go back and get that RRT. Now, once you get your RRT, it does show that you're a little bit more clinically inclined. So this is especially true for new respiratory therapists. So if they see that you can only pass your TMC but you're not your CSE, 
they're gonna hire the RRT over the CRT any day of the week. Um, it doesn't matter how good you are, it just shows that you know a little bit more about respiratory therapy. Well anyway, I hope to clear this video up. Um, to give a small recap, um, take the boards, you have two cut scores, you have the high cut score and the low cut score. If you want to become an RRT or eligible to take the test, you have to go ahead and pass the high cut score. If you only pass the low cut score, you're going to be a CRT. You don't even pass the low cut score, you're not going to be a respiratory therapist at all. You have to go back and take the exam again. So it is easier to get a job as an RRT. RRTs are definitely going to get hired. More people are looking to get uh, RRTs rather than CRTs. Um, now this doesn't matter if you have an associate's or a bachelor's, just focus on the board exam right now. Um, I do have a whole other video talking about a bachelor's versus an associate's degree. So if you want to see that as well, um, I'll leave that link in the description below. Anyway, I hope this video helped and see you in the next one.